Well, it's been my great honor for the last 20 years to work with inventors, many of whom are engineers like yourselves. Invention usually involves incremental steps forward. And inventors are everyday people, many of whom are engineers. So I've come up with a couple of standards or tests or questions that I use to help identify invention. The first question that I think is really useful to ask is, have I solved a problem? If you've solved a problem, chances are you've invented. I'll give a quick example. Have any of you ever made a smoothie in a blender? It's very hard. You got to stick the, it doesn't mix. But somebody came along and said there's got to be a better way. And that way was to put a stir stick on a ball and socket joint on the lid so that you could stir as you blended without hitting the blades. Sometimes identifying the problem is part of solving the problem and coming up with an invention. Another question that you can ask, is my doing something that's an improvement? Have I made the process better? Is it more efficient? Is it stronger? Is it lighter? Is it stronger? That's another indicator that you may have invented. A third question is, if you're having trouble identifying that you've solved a problem or that you've made something better, sometimes just being different is an invention. Just the fact that you've done it differently than it was done before or differently, differently than your competitors are doing it, that can be an invention. Fourth question to maybe ask, is what I'm doing giving me a competitive advantage? Sometimes we can put all those questions under one heading, which is, is what I'm doing likely to be copied or used by somebody else? If so, that's an indicator that you might have an invention and that you should consider getting a patent. Now that you've identified an invention, the question becomes, now what do I do? If you're a graduate student, you probably have you work for a university that's got a tech transfer office. They'll probably take care of everything. Same with a big company. They probably have an intellectual property office. They'll take it. They'll run with it. If you work for a small company or a company that's not as big or you're an entrepreneur, you wear a lot of hats and you're going to have to do a little bit more of the work yourself. You're going to have to go find a patent attorney and see to it that that gets patented. Now there's a couple things to watch out for. Some countries in the world actually require you to file a patent application before public disclosure. So if you publish your paper or you put your product out on the market, you may have stopped yourself from getting a patent in some countries. So it's a good idea to coordinate with your tech transfer office in that situation. Some countries like the United States have a grace period, what we call the one year grace period. So if you do publicly disclose or your product does come out on the market, you have a year in which to file your patent application. Another thing to keep in mind is that in the United States anyway, uh, other activities can start that one year grace period. For example, uh, if you make an offer to sell uh, or an actual sell, even if it's private, can start that one year clock ticking. I think as engineers, mechanical engineers, you are uniquely situated to be inventors. The work you do every day can constitute an invention. And your work, your contributions, they have value to society. And I believe your contributions can and should be recognized and with any luck, compensated.